Great day, students. It's Mr. Sargent here with your day eight recap video for science. Today, well, I want us to discuss weather some more. Now, on Monday, we talked about the definition of weather. And if you remember the definition of weather, it is the conditions of the air or atmosphere in one place at one time. Now, today's weather, it's not the normal North Carolina weather, is it? For the past couple of weeks, we've had sunshine, 90 degrees, Mr. Sergeant sweating at car rider line, Mr. Sergeant passing out. Be no, listen, it's been hot. It's been sunny for the past couple of weeks, but today it's something different, isn't it? If we looked out the window, it's cloudy. It's a little cooler. And we have these little drops of water coming from the sky. What could they be called? Rain. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, it is, it is raining outside. And that's why I brought my trusty umbrella to keep me as dry as possible. And for car ride line to keep you guys as dry as possible. Now, the reason why it's raining is because a weather system has pushed up into North Carolina and has caused some weather. Well, that system started with Hurricane Ida. And as you know, on Monday, we talked about how Hurricane Ida had made landfall in Louisiana, right there, and Mississippi, right there. And it moves its way up. And the great thing about weather is it changes from day to day. So, for today's activity, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is take a closer look at hurricanes. We're going to learn some facts about hurricanes. We're going to learn what we can do uh, during a hurricane to keep ourselves safe. And we're going to look at the science behind the weather. So to help us learn a little bit more about hurricanes, I found this book right here on Epic. So let's sit back and read together. Hurricanes by Andrea Rivera. Science. Hurricanes are huge storms. Storm clouds form over the ocean. Wind makes the clouds spin. The clouds form an eye. More clouds swirl around the eye. Hurricanes have strong winds. They blow at least 74 miles per hour, 119 kilometers per hour. The winds make giant waves. They bring heavy rain too. Technology. Weather maps show where storms are forming. They show how strong the storm is. They show where it is going too. Computers make the weather maps. They get data from satellites. Sometimes planes fly into storms to collect data too. Engineering. Hurricanes can cause floods. People build levees and flood walls. These help hold back the water. Hurricane winds cause damage. Engineers build special roads and bridges. They are made to survive the strong winds. Art. Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005. It damaged New Orleans, Louisiana. Some artists used the debris. Their art showed the storm's power. Math. A scale measures hurricanes. Faster winds get higher numbers. Category 1 is weak. Category 5 is strong. Sometimes hurricanes change categories. Category 1. Category 2. Category 3. Category 4. Category 5. Key stats. Each hurricane is given a name. The names come from a list. The list goes from A to Z. Most hurricanes are between 100 and 300 miles, 160 and 480 kilometers across. Hurricane Sandy in 2012 was 1,100 miles, 1,770 kilometers across. It was the biggest hurricane ever in the Atlantic Ocean. There was so much great information in that book, and, and we're going to focus on a lot of that. But today I want to show you 
where and how hurricanes form. So, with the help of the Science-Tron 10,000, we are going to be able to see where and kind of how hurricanes form. So, behind me, I have a map of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, we are boop, right here. That's us. Everybody wait. The storm that hit uh, Hurricane Ida hit in Louisiana and in Mississippi, not too far away. And what's gonna happen is because weather changes every day and because we have wind, it is going to move. Now, if we take a look here, you can kind of see how the wind patterns are in the United States. Down here, we have a thing called the Gulf Stream. We're gonna come back to the Gulf Stream, ladies and gentlemen, because don't tell anybody, that is where hurricanes form. We have the Labrador Currents right here. We have the California Current over here by California. And we have the Alaska Current that goes up to Alaska. Well, right now, we don't have to worry too much about the California Current or the Alaska Current or even the Labrador Current. We're gonna focus on the Gulf Stream. Now, the Gulf Stream is a series of air that pushes weather from the Caribbean, from the Gulf of Mexico, from Southern or mid Atlantic Ocean, and it pushes it up to us in North Carolina and into the South. Now to really get a full understanding of just where hurricanes form, we need to see the world. The world is a lot bigger than just North Carolina, isn't it? If we're looking at this as where we are, in this whole entire world, we are right here. You can barely see it, can you? All right, the world is a huge place and all around the world, different storms form. Now, if we're talking about a strong storm that forms on this side over here, we're talking about a typhoon, okay? It's very similar to a hurricane. It's got the strong winds, it's got the heavy rain, but it forms over here in the Pacific Ocean. What we're gonna focus on today is hurricane. Where does it form? Now to see where hurricanes start from, we have to know that imaginary line that's on every map of the world, and that is the equator. Now the equator can be defined as the line that separates the Northern and the Southern hemisphere. Now the equator on this map is about right, let me get my marker going, is right here. And it's a much straighter line than the one that I drew. Now, the reason why this is important is, well, hurricanes form near the equator. And the reason for this is, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's got warmer temperatures and it's got wa warmer water temperatures. Now, for a hurricane to form, it needs that warm water. So many hurricanes form right about here. Now, they don't start off as hurricanes, do they? No, they don't. They start off as a small tropical storm. But as it is sitting in this warm water and getting that warm air, there's more what we call evaporation. And the more evaporation we have, well, the bigger clouds we're going to get. So as it is moving this way, does anyone know, remember what stream of air moves a storm? If you said the Gulf Stream, good. It follows along the Gulf Stream. But as it passes all this water right here, guess what? It gets stronger and stronger and stronger until it becomes a hurricane. So are hurricanes something that we need to worry about? Well, kind of. Because we live in North Carolina and we live near the coast or around the coast, we're always gonna feel some effects if there may be a hurricane that comes. But will we ever feel the full effect? No, because as we just learned, as the hurricane passes over land, it weakens, all right? Now, those that live on the coast, those that live at the beach, those that live 
in the southern states have a higher rate of feeling the effects of these hurricanes. But by the time they get to us, they weaken. Does that mean we're not going to get rain? No, we're still going to get the rain. Does that mean we're not going to get the winds? We're still going to get winds. Are they going to be as strong as they were when they were a hurricane? No. But are they still going to be strong to us? Absolutely. So the question I raise to you is what can we do to prepare for a hurricane? What can we do to keep our family safe? What can we do to keep ourselves safe? What can we do to keep our doggies safe? Well, let's talk about that. In your take home folder, ladies and gentlemen, I have put this activity up there. It's a reading activity which talks about different facts, characteristics, and where hurricanes may strike. But what I really like is on the back. And if we take a look at the back here, you will see how to be prepared for a hurricane. And it's got some incredible ideas like before a hurricane hits, having an emergency pack. Making a family communication plan, which is huge, hugely. Now also on this paper, you see some key terms and key vocabulary. Now, when we're talking about vocabulary for a hurricane, we cannot forget about the eye. The eye is the center of the storm. Now, it's also very calm in the eye, which is kind of deceiving because this huge storm going on, and then right in the center, there's no storm. Because as we know, a hurricane spins, doesn't it? And to have something spin, you have to have something in the center. That's the eye. The other words that are on here are tropical, which is kind of the what we talked about when we talked about where they form. They form in the tropics, don't they? We have storm surge, which definitely is something we need to know, and evacuation. So ladies and gentlemen, I would love for you to come back in on Friday knowing those four keywords. I want to thank all of you for joining me today. Hopefully you, you learned a little bit more about hurricanes and what we can do to keep safe. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow we're going to continue talking about timelines. So I look forward to seeing some of your timelines. And on Friday, we do have a lab that kind of talks a little bit about what we've been doing this week. All right. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a great night.